So a couple of days ago, CP Monkey was able to get their hands on leaked information showcasing the performance of the upcoming M1X chip that's gonna be inside the MacBook Pro 16. And when I saw these multi-core speeds in Cinebench, I was absolutely blown away. They were nuts. And in order for me to kind of break this down for you, I'm gonna have to get a bit nerdy. And if you like these nerdy style of videos, please let me know by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. They're doing this simply by doubling the performance cores. Right now, if you buy a MacBook Air or MacBook Pro 13, there's eight CPU cores. Four of them are performance, the other four are efficiency cores. What they're doing is they're doubling the performance cores. So instead of four, it's going up to eight, but they're still keeping the four efficiency cores, giving you a total of 12 CPU cores. The GPU, on the other hand, is being doubled as well. Instead of eight, it's getting bumped up to 16. 128 execution units is going up to 256. And if you take a look at this multi-core speed in Cinebench R23 that CPU Monkey found, this is literally two MacBook Pros together, like two MacBook Pro 13s. And to me, that's nuts because this beats out an iMac, a 2019 iMac with an i9 10th gen Intel CPU. It doesn't blow it away, but it beats it out, which is very impressive for a laptop. Now, single core clock speeds are gonna stay exactly the same because the processor speed is sticking at 3.2 gigahertz, at least based on these leaks. Things might change in the future, they might ramp it up because there's obviously gonna be more power draw with a bigger chassis to provide better cooling. So how do these nerdy synthetic benchmarks equate to real world performance? Let's take compiling Mozilla Firefox, for example. It took me 36 minutes using Rosetta on the MacBook Pro 13, which is ridiculously good. I think with the M1X chip, and again, these are my estimates, these are not real world leaks or anything like that, it's probably gonna take half the time, 18 minutes to compile it, which is absolutely insane. This is better than any Intel laptop CPU you can buy today. The only ones that are probably gonna be putting these M1 chips up for the run is probably the 5000 series from AMD. What about Blender? It would take me 16 minutes to compile the classroom scene using nothing but the CPU. That's probably gonna get dropped down to eight minutes with this new M1X chip. The BMW scene, it's gonna drop by two and a half minutes to 2.5. These results will be absolutely amazing. And look, these computers are still not gonna be gaming machines. Like don't expect to be playing AAA titles on these new M1X MacBook Pros. In fact, the GPU cores, even though they're being doubled to 16, are, are still not gonna be much faster than the 5600M that you'd find in the 2019 MacBook Pro. It'll be a nice performance boost, something you'd expect year over year, but it's not going to, to crush any RTX 30 series cards. In fact, it's not even gonna come close. But the thing about Apple and these new ARM chips is not so much the GPU power, it's being able to run Apple Silicon based applications. And when you have that with the type of architecture that Apple is using in these new laptops, it ends up being faster than most Intel and some AMD equivalents. And to me, that is insanely impressive. But what makes this so attractive is you're buying a MacBook Pro 16, which is a bigger laptop, but still getting low fan noise that you'd get in a MacBook Pro 13 and that insane battery life. Like once you go up to that size with most laptops, you expect battery life to take a hit because usually laptops that size have H series processors and you don't get the battery life you would get on an Ultrabook. But being able to do that with the MacBook Pro 16 is gonna be a first. You know, 20 hours of battery life, the chassis is bigger, Apple can use the same battery that they're currently using right now and, and achieve these great results. Now the design, I don't think they're gonna change much. I still think they're gonna be using this chassis. They're not gonna be using a modified or brand new version of it. And I think they're saving that when they introduce their, their, their redesign in the future or when they would announced the MacBook Pro 14. They might get rid of the touch bar, but I'm not 100% sure. They might do the same thing they did on the MacBook Air and give you more function keys to work with. Speakers will be the same, touchpad will be the same, display is going to be the same. Everything you loved about the MacBook Pro 16 will be the same in 2021. The only thing I can personally see them changing is maybe adding some sort of MagSafe port like they've been rumored to be doing because that's something they wanna include on future Mac products. Now, you can't buy it with 64 gigabytes of RAM, but you can do it with 32. That's being bumped up to 32 compared to 16 you can get on the MacBook Pro 13. And I think because of the way these ARM chips handle RAM differently, 
than Intel and AMD based laptops, 32 will feel like having 64. So I don't think that's gonna be a big issue, but man, crazy, like crazy what Apple is able to do with these ARM chips. Like if you're into productivity, like not gaming, if you're truly into productivity and, and you're some sort of video creator or programmer or, or some sort of artist who relies on hardcore CPU performance that's been optimized for Apple Silicon, you're gonna absolutely love these things. Now I will say this, before I wrap this up, if you have a MacBook Pro 13 already or a MacBook Air, do not get jealous, please don't. Okay, these things are still absolute mo monsters. And me as a YouTuber, I could totally run my business on a Pro 13 and not need to upgrade to the 16. I think the 16 is really truly for those of you out there who want that bigger display and and and, and have the money to, to waste as little time as possible because you're in some sort of crazy productivity industry uh, and you want uh, to have the fastest results and, and less downtime as possible. So. Don't be jealous. Your MacBook Pro 13 that you just bought it, it, is still amazing. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and a first look at the M1X. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.